Recording live from Glory Hole Studios in Chicago and beyond, this is Cognitive Dissonance. Every episode we blast anyone who gets in our way. We bring critical thinking, skepticism, and irreverence to any topic that makes the news, makes it big, or makes us mad. It's skeptical, it's political, and there is no welcome mat. Today is... Thursday. The 11th. The 11th. January the 11th. I also knew that without checking my watch and phone. So, <laughs> And today we are doing a long form discussion of the summary of election fraud in the 2020 presidential election in the swing states as delivered by Donald J. Trump and his crack team of crackpots. I'll tell you what, man. This thing is the cringiest thing I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. One of my favorite things is that throughout, there's just unattributed quotation marks. To my favorite thing. Like throughout the whole thing, we know what we should do is we should read all of the unattributed quotes Can I, I was, to start out. Let's, let's just start that. out. Let's, let's start okay. out. Go yeah. ahead. So what's on the first page here? So out of fraud, no action arises. Again, guys, that is quoted without attribution. Should we search for it? Search for it and see who said it. Oh God, I hope it was Trump. <laughs> I hope he quoted himself. Because it looks like it's a translation of a Latin phrase. And it sounds like it's a legal principle that the courts may refuse to enforce a claim arising out of the claimant's illegal or immoral conduct. And I think that it is ex terpi causa non order actio. Oh, you said that he crushed it. You said Did exactly, I fucking nail that? You said it, you said it just like Caesar would have said Here's it. the thing. I also cast a Hogwarts spell when I did that. Outstanding. So, yeah, no, like, you knocked the fucking glasses out of my hand. <laughs> So evidently not my my nose <laughs> off my face like that bad guy in there or whatever. There's a bunch of quotes in here and they're all not attributed. You know, like, like here's the thing. If you look through here, they went to great pains to footnote a bunch of garbage. We've got to talk about thing. And we're going to talk about a bunch of that garbage, yeah. but they didn't bother to footnote the, the quotes. Like right. why, why not? Yeah. I, why would you ever quote something and not attribute who the fucking quote is from, I automatically am like, you're dim. Yeah, well, you're what you, fucking What dim. you want to do is be like, all right, so those are six mistakes. Right. We're starting off with, with the red six pen. Six mistakes. It's yeah. six mistakes in. And you didn't even do anything except for list stuff that isn't irre is irrelevant to what you're talking about. So just to give the listeners an idea, structurally, what this document does is it goes by state by state. There's a little, it's an introduction, but really the introduction is, I told you there was fraud. I really, really did. Yeah. Right. And then it goes state by state. And then it's just pages and pages of bullet points with just like an endless supply of there was this many, this things and that many whatsos. And there is a ballot here and a ballot there and here a ballot, there a ballot everywhere, a ballot, ballot. <laughs> and like, and then all of the ballot these was his name. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And, and you read it and it's just, it's eye-wateringly like repetitious yeah. and mind-numbing. What, what it is, is Gish Gallup, right? Yes. What it is, is they're throwing as much as they can at you yeah. to confuse you, right? What this is, is made to confuse you because one, it's contextless facts. So one of the major things that happens, and I'll give you an example of what some of these facts are. I'll yeah. read a couple of these bullets. Georgia was called by 17, by 11,779 votes. Another one is the ballot images of these votes along with the rest of the in-person ballots on election day were destroyed. Then there's another one down here that says at least 12, 2,871 ballots were counted two or three times in the second machine count, totaling 6,118 questionable votes. And so what it is, is just a list of things, right? Now, these things are then footnoted, like right. Tom Tom alluded to. So each one has a footnote. And each one that has something. Some of them just don't. So right. they'll just say something and you'll be yeah. like, okay, well, where's the footnote for it? No, there isn't one. Right. And so, so one of the major things that they're doing is this gish gallop. They're just dumping, it's a dump of information, hoping you'll just, it'll just wear you down, right? right. What they're trying to do is wear the reader down. If you were somebody who is, you know, maybe going to question some of this, you're like, I just don't want to look this all up. Yep. I just don't care. I'm like, and so- for you, it's a loss. It's a loss because you won't do the work that they went to the, all the trouble of, of trying to create, right? They tried to create a bunch of work for you. And if you're not willing to do it, then you lost in the eyes of all the other people who are presenting this argument. The other thing that it is, is a ton of 
Correlation is not causation. There's a ton of that. They'll mention something. They'll be like this. And you'll be like, so what? Right. Right, yeah. So yep. what? There's a huge amount of that. There's it's a, implied. Yeah. It's constantly implied that this is something. And the, like, I want to return to the Gish Gallup thing because, like, the reason that that is effective in in this strategy, in particular, like, it's, that's a debate strategy, right? So it's just to overwhelm your debate opponent with like more things that they than they could possibly respond to. But throwing this out online, the way this is out, is now. If you're a Trump, you know, uh, if you're like supportive of this like crackpot theory of the 2020, you know, election s- steal nonsense, like you now have 32 pages worth of stuff that you have to give to your opponents that they have to try to debunk piece by yeah. piece by piece yeah, by piece. They got to fact check it. But a lot of it is like nothing, like you're saying. A lot of it is like, well, those votes, those vote ballot things are gone. And you're like, okay. What so, does that mean? So they're gone. I yeah. get that they're gone. One, I don't know that I believe that they're gone. First of all, because a lot of this, when you look at it, most of this is just blatantly not true. Sure. Like when you start digging into these things, a lot of this stuff is just fucking flat out not true at all. But like, even when you grant some of these positions, they don't prove fraud. They don't prove anything. There's like nothing behind most of this. And, and I think I think it, the best one here to talk about <clears throat> is this one here, because I actually searched for this one, right? So- the ballot images of these votes, along with the rest of the in-person ballots cast on election day, were destroyed, right? So I, I was like, okay, but, well, I'm by curious. The way, no I, footnote for that one. So um, there's no footnote, but I was curious. So yeah. I looked it up. I was like, I typed that into a search engine. Yeah. I was like, what does that mean? Tell right. me what that means. And what I found was I found an AP article. And that AP article says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it up on the big screen here, and I'm gonna put the big screen up on the TV so we can look at it together. But it says missing 2020 poll tallies in Georgia don't prove 20,000 votes never existed. Other records are available. And so what they do is they talk about these things that they said were were destroyed. And they say, look, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the case. I found another article that said, look, just because one stream isn't available doesn't mean there's not multiple ways to verify these votes. The, these receipts matter. The accounting from the machines matter. Just because the images of the ballots are gone doesn't mean it's necess- necessarily fraud. There's other ways to tally this stuff. What they're doing is they're saying, this thing's gone. And they're hoping you don't pull back this yeah. tiny little curtain that says, that doesn't matter. That's yeah. okay. Well, you know, it's it's like all other conspiracy theories, right? It's, it's, it's anomaly hunting, right? It's like, well, these ballots images are gone. You're like, okay, yeah. But like, there's also the memory cards from the machines, and then there's also a paper trail printout from the machine. And so both of those things actually match. And so you actually have evidence in triplicate. So I have evidence in triplicate that something happened. I'm missing one of the items. I now still have evidence in duplicate yeah. that this has happened. Just saying it. And plus, like, like that is a statement of fact that, again, has no footnote. So this is both improperly and, like, uh, incompletely documented. It's it's both. And then, like, we'll talk about this too, but if you were to believe just, like, the broad outline of how these, like, frauds are supposed to have worked, what would be fascinating is that you would have to believe that each of these states had an enormous infrastructure of fraudsters, and they were all perpetrating a different kind of fraud state by state. Sure. The strategy in Arizona that supposedly the fraud was used to was 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 used to get Biden in is different than Michigan, which is different than Pennsylvania, which is different. Like, so if there was some like nationwide conspiracy, this thing would involve literally thousands and thousands of people yeah. across like all of these swing states, and they didn't even coalesce around a single strategy. The, you, you, the, it boggles the mind to imagine a conspiracy of that size with no absolutely hard evidence to support it. That's just not how anything in the world works. And in places that are Republican run in a lot of places. Absolutely. Republican yes. run. These are places where the people who are in the highest offices are Republicans who are overseeing this process and saying, no, it's None of these people wanted Joe Biden to win. 
They Dude. didn't want Joe Biden to win. There's a, they had him on the yeah. fucking January 6th guy is sitting there saying, I didn't want Joe Biden to, like he's looking the people in the face yep. in January 6th saying, I didn't want him to win. Yeah, these are life, look, look, at one point, fucking former Attorney General Bill Barr is in this document yeah. as being a conspirator. Yeah. Like legitimately as being one of the conspirators working to- He had four more years under you, right. dude. Easily. Right. You yeah. loved him. This is the guy who redacted the Mueller report. Yeah. This is not like some democratic deep state operative. Yeah. So you, you, the things you have to believe before you even launch right. into looking at this, right. the things you have to believe just on the face of this are, are just fucking mind boggling. It's like, oh, there's a democratic conspiracy that includes Bill Barr, yeah. who what? Like- He's a fucking Manchurian candidate that we activated yeah. somehow. Like, did somebody blink in the right order? You know, yeah. Bill Barr has been activated. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. I, I also, too, one of the things that is very evident when you read this is the same arguments he had on election night are coming out in this where he's talking about how certain votes got kept going and other ones didn't go far enough. Right. And, it, and and if you remember that night, he was like, stop the count. But he was only saying that stop the count in one place where he was ahead. He was not saying stop the count in the place where he wasn't ahead. Right. He wanted to keep counting in Arizona. He count didn't want to keep votes. counting. Stop yeah. the counting. Yeah. yeah. He wanted, he and, and this literally reads like that. Yeah. There's a part of this yeah. where he's talking about the votes came, the votes came in on that evening and then they just kept counting. You're like, well, that's how votes work. Yeah. That's literally, how, but if you're an idiot and you see this and you think, well, the votes just kept coming in and you're like, yeah, man, that's fucking how voting works. Yeah. They just come in and we count them until we're done. Dude, it, like in the, in the portion about Michigan, He's like beside himself that he was winning. And he's in the introduction, same thing. He's beside himself because at night he was winning. And then as time went on and more votes were counted, he wasn't winning anymore. And he's like, but the election was over. So I should be, I should just it's win. It's like it's written by the dumbest person on the planet. And you're like, what? Like it takes time. Yeah. And different states have different rules about like which votes count. So some states, it's got to be in by a certain time. Some states, you know, it's got to be postmarked by a certain time, et cetera. It's like somebody is so dumbfounded with their own refrigerator that the light could go off when the door shuts. <laughs> where they're just they're just staring at it and they open up the, how did the light come where? up? How did they even know it was going to open the fridge? You know, that's Boom. what, seriously, yeah. that's what it feels like, yeah. man. This when you hear what he has crazy. to say and you think, dude, do you understand us a lick of what you're talking about? No. And the thing is, I don't, I don't think he cares. No, no, that's no. That's the thing the is, point. Yeah. I don't think he cares whether or not he's right or no. wrong. He, what he wants is the result. And I'm going to tell you that it doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong. I'm just going to keep saying things over and over and over again. And it literally doesn't matter whether I'm right or wrong. And this, this is common throughout the whole piece. He keeps re, re mentioning arguments and cases that have been thrown out of court. Yeah. Thro they've been, they've been dismissed. I'm going to read a, a, a Dude, half a dozen the of these yeah. where they're just dismissed. Yeah. Also, before we get to those, because we absolutely have to talk about that, because I found the same thing yeah. when I was just like, who said that? And then you look at it and you're like, you said that in court. Okay. Yeah. But like, this is also not a report. This is a book report. Yeah. Right. A this bad is, one. This is a bad book report. Yeah. But like, this is not a summary of findings. This is not like some independent panel. This is not a report from a committee. This is like, he wrote a bunch of shit down so that he can say, because what he wants to be able to do is say, look, we released a 32 page report with over 197, you know, or whatever the number is, you know, items of fraud that were listed in the 2020 election. The media won't report on it. Right. But it's like, yeah, man, like you wrote up a report. That's like me writing out like all the reasons I'm awesome. Sure. And then using the reasons I wrote down as like independent evidence of my right. awesomeness. Right. Now, I am awesome, but I actually still want third-party verification, right? <laughs> like, I'm still, I'm looking for it, guys. Sure, so, like, sure. you know, send your email. But, like, if I just write down a list of things that are great about me, and then I'm like, well, there's a report about how great I am. It's like, well, you fucking wrote it yourself. Fucking wrote it. I I want to ask you, before we start getting into this, because we know that this is a big, long list of basically debunked voter fraud. Right. Right. It's his list 
of debunked voter fraud. Some of it, we'll get to it, but some of it is thrown out court cases. Some of it is garbage news sites and garbage news articles from fraud websites and propaganda sites. Yeah. Some of it is, I'm going to read a couple of things to you too, Tom, that where he's he's actually footnoted articles where when you read the second half of the article, like I wouldn't, I could not believe you footnoted this. Right, well, he's right? counting on people You're not to do the You're blown away that yeah. you footnoted this. Literally, the second half of the article makes you look like an idiot. Right. Why would you footnote this for me? Right. But this is a this is an absolute, what it is, is him trying to say there was voter fraud, right? Yeah. Is this not a blueprint to hand to the prosecutor in Georgia to say, this? here's the RICO case right here. Here it is right here. Here's Donald Trump trying to show you time and time and time again throughout. He's actually listed all the times that he's sent things to court. He's listed all the all the places that keep on parroting the same things he's saying over and over again. Can't you just see that this is literally what they're trying to prosecute him for? In fucking Georgia, they're trying to prosecute him as a RICO case. Yeah. They're saying that he or orchestrated this whole thing. This feels like he he made a, a list of his breadcrumbs. It does very much feel like that, but like I think he's counting on, I think the strategy is he releases this report, he then gets to go out on the campaign trail and say, there's a 32-page report with yeah. 200 and some things on it you know, pointing at the election fraud. Now they're trying to prosecute me despite that report. And if he gets elected, he's fine. Like, I really think yeah. that he feels like if I get elected, I'll be fine. They can't throw the sitting president in jail. I'll be fine if I can get elected. This election is his Hail Mary, stay out of prison, sure. pass. So I think this is strategically not that dumb. Yeah. I think the report is full of insane gibberish. This feels cobbled together. Yeah. This feels also like something you put together, like that you had to turn in, you know, the like last in, the last minute yeah. in college and you're like, fuck, uh, oh shit. Okay. So I'll get my uh, homework. Copy, paste. <laughs> yeah, for real. Copy, paste. What's your source? Rumble.com. Fucking love it. Awesome. Yeah. What's your source? YouTube video I saw once. Awesome. Put on there. Footnote that fucker. So I want to talk a little bit about this. So, um, so I'm going to start with footnote 22. So footnote 22 is Fulton County Superior Court filing, and that specifically is referred to... Up here. Thousands of pristine, unfolded absentee ballots were counted during the hand count audit in Fulton County, according to at least six witnesses, which is a subject of ongoing litigation. These absentee ballots had no folds and went 98% to Joe Biden had been, uh, had been added in a fraudulent manner, witnesses said. So uh, I got a Atlanta Journal Constitution article here says that a judge, judge dismissed a lawsuit Wednesday by Donald Trump supporters who sought to inspect absentee ballots from last year's presidential election, a decision that came a day after Georgia investigators told the court that they were unable to find any counterfeit ballots. Superior Court Judge Brian Amaro's ruling ended the, the, the last remaining late major lawsuit of the 2020 election and prevented an outside review of Fulton County's 147 original absentee ballots. The judge's order is the latest in a series of decisions against the former Republican president who have asked the courts to help him pursue suspicions of fraud and reverse the results of the election. It says there was no indication of pristine ballots with filed, with perfectly filled in ovals and creases as alleged in the lawsuits. All ballots in those batches appeared to be authentic. And then it says... While no election is perfect, there was no widespread fraud, no, no widespread fraud or illegal voting large enough to overturn the election. And there was some discrepancies in some of the counts, right? Sure. But there, these were right. hundreds of votes yeah. at most. And in some cases, Trump got those votes more than right. Biden did. Right. Yep. Well, it's, it's like it's like when he hired the fucking like cyber ninjas or whatever yeah. in, in Maricopa County, Arizona, to do an audit or to, to do a recount. And they came up with more Biden votes. Here's another one I want you to look at. So this is one of the footnotes in here. I'm going to put this on the big screen so people can look at it. Tom, I want you to just look at this website. This is a website that he linked to. I'm afraid I'm going to get a virus from it. This is a website that he linked to oh my God. inside of here. It's called Under, Under, Uncover DC. And this is an absolute trash site that looks like it's fucking yeah. made with like the worst web browser that you could possibly imagine. And all it is is just a bunch of little notes and like receipts, et cetera, that they, that they claim yeah. are real. And they're trying to say that there's a bunch of 
ballots, right, that were bought the day before. I seriously searched a half an hour to see if I could find, because they, they say there was a bunch of these ballots that were bought the day before. One, that doesn't necessarily mean that they were used in that election. Right. They're just saying that the ballots were bought the day before, right? Even if I, sure. uh, let's presume that I'm saying that that's yeah, true. Right. They were just bought the day before. That doesn't mean that they were used in that election. It doesn't mean that- Doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything, yeah. right? It doesn't mean anything. And they're saying that they bought more ballots than there are people in the district or whatever. Sure. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's not true. But when you go to this website, I searched, Tom, for an actual real news site to talk about this. I searched Can't for find one. Anything. I could not find a single news site. Yeah. Not one news site. If this was real, every single news site would have this up. There. Everybody every would be Every single it. one would want yeah. to cover it. They want those clicks. They want it to be real. They want this... Man, think of how profitable this could be to yeah. any news corporation. Dude, it doesn't matter, left or right news organization. This story would sell. This story would sell. It would click. It would it would pop. The fact that it's like uncovered DC, you've never heard of this. No, you've, you've never, heard, never of heard of this for a fucking reason. This could be my site, dude. This is like a WordPress plugin. It absolutely is. This is, is nothing. This is nothing. You could, like, how, like, this is nothing. Like, how much material is even here? Are there years worth of material here? Is this some shit that, like, popped up? in order for us to like create bullshit. You can dismiss this kind of stuff and you should. We've talked about like being media literate, like being news literate. You should look at this site and immediately dismiss it out of hand. Out of hand. Out and of there's hand. a bunch of, of links in this to another site. And this site is called, uh, it's called the Georgia Star News. Tom, can you just read the top part of this? Yep. If you don't follow politics in Georgia closely, or even if you do, you might be forgiven for not knowing much about the Georgia Star News. Founded just after the November election, when President Biden narrowly flipped the state by about 12,000 votes, it looks like a regular news website with a lifestyle section, a widget for the weather, and stories about local and national goings-on. But the site is more than just a local news outlet. It's part of the Star News Network, an expanding network of pro-Trump sites seeking to influence local politics with conservative opinion by mimicking the look and feel of local newspapers. The group operates eight state-focused news sites, including in key including in key electoral college states such as Michigan, Arizona, Ohio, and Florida. Steve Bannon, a former strategist for President Trump, described the Georgia Star News in a radio interview as content you can't get anywhere else. We're not conservative, Inc., he said. It's very populist. It's very nationalist. It's very MAGA. It's very America first. Yeah. This is part of a media ecosystem that is being built it's made in up. order to amplify this kind of yeah. bullshit messages. And and I, I found a, a half dozen of these. Every single time I took one of these headlines or one of these footnotes where he has like the name of something or uh, when he lists some sort of fraud, I would take it and i put it in a search engine. And inevitably, there would be seven or eight of the same story Right. That's re circulated on these exact same sites. They all look the same. Right. They have different names. This is like when you got that newspaper delivered to exactly your house. Exactly what I was it's gonna get. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Which is when uh, over the last last year, I had a, a newspaper that was delivered, a print newspaper that was delivered here. And we covered a whole episode on it. We did a whole episode on this newspaper that was delivered to me, which was fake news, literally fake news, made up news. And it was all just scaremongering about the new upcoming election. Right. It was all scaremongering to try to get us to vote differently than we were planning on voting in the, in the governor election, because that's what it was mainly mm -hmm. focusing on. And so it was a fake news paper, physical paper. And if you looked at it, it was, there was all over the state, they had it listed. It was the exact same paper, but it had different names. So it would be called something else. It'd be called like the DuPage Register. Mm -hmm. And then it would be called like the St. Charles Times and the blah, blah, blah. None of these things existed beforehand, but they just used the names of the cities to make it seem, seem like it's local and then make you feel like, whoa, what the hell is this? When I opened it, it literally had a had a thing in there because Pritzker made him put a thing in there that said, this is not real news. Right. He yeah. made him put something in there. <clears throat> And they had to they had to acquiesce, but they even did that sh in a shitty way. I read that on on the show. But this is a it's a big it's a big undertaking in this state to get those papers on my driveway and your driveway and right. everyone else's driveway. Right? This is easier. Yeah. This is websites. This is nothing. Yep. This is seconds of work to register a new domain name and to copy and paste and change the color scheme in your WordPress site. That's all it is. It takes no effort. And they did it all over the place. And if you scroll through these, it's not just, sometimes it'll be different sites, but sometimes it'll be the same site that just happens to post the same thing multiple times. 
And so these are all just, and if you try to find any of these like headlines that they seem to be uh -huh. bolding out, you can't find them anywhere, anywhere in real news. Yeah. There's not an ABC news report. There's not a, there's not an NPR, not a BBC, not a anything. The only time I found anything, anything was one time I think I found a Fox News one. But I think it was just referring to this thing. It yeah, wasn't right. even it wasn't even breaking the news itself. Yeah, this is like a conservative MAGA media or a Boris. Yeah, it, it's it, off it, its own ass. Yeah, and the whole thing is intended to create the look and feel of authenticity, and to, and they're good at it. Yeah, like I, I want to give like props. They're good at it. They're they're people who would go to this website are going to be fooled by this website, right? If you go to the Uncovered DC site. You're a conspiracy theorist. It is a it is a site like when you when you brought that last one up. It is a site where like the background imagery images is all stuff like expose, no spin zone, like all this sort of like what they're doing is pandering to a specific audience that they know how to reach. They know how to reach in and touch exactly what it is that they want to see. Oh, we need it. We need to create something that looks local to you. Right. Well, we'll create the Georgia State or Star News, and we'll have like like they said, we'll have a little lifestyle section. We'll have a little weather section. That stuff's cheap as free. Who gives a shit? Like, we'll have all this stuff. It'll look as real as it needs to look, but the bulk of it will be copy-paste bullshit that goes to Georgia, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, et cetera. Here's another site that they that they link to a bunch. And this is true the vote. And I just, and this is for, this is an actual old article, right? So this is from 2012, Tom. So this true the vote's been around for a long time. Guess where their roots are? The Tea Party. What so, shock. So read just this really quickly at the top. As November 6th approaches, the efforts of True the Vote, a Texas anti-voter fraud group recently profiled by the New York Times, are gaining national attention. Despite scant evidence of voter fraud, the group is laser-focused on weeding it out. It has pushed for voter ID laws, voter roll purges, and other controversial voting-related measures in a host of states. True the Vote has also promised to deliver one million volunteer poll watchers on Election Day, though its resources appear to be quite <laughs> modest. It's like that million moms yeah, where there's like 12 moms. moms. Yeah. Given its annual summits featuring conservative speakers and its hand in spurring voter integrity projects around the country, we thought we'd take a closer look at the activist group. True the Vote is a grassroots initiative spun out of a Houston, Texas-based Tea Party organization called the King Street Patriots. So this is not like, by any stretch of the imagination, some independent third-party like fact checker. This is in here. This is this is this seven is or eight of these footnotes. Yeah. It's like seven or eight of these footnotes. Yeah. There's a true the vote site. And I was like, who's true the vote? Well, then I find this ProPublic article that's literally saying it's a it's a conservative group made up during the Tea Party when they were mad that a black guy won the election. Yep. Yeah. That's trying, literally what it is. It is. And like all those efforts, like ProPublic was a lot nicer about it than I would have been. All those efforts are efforts to disenfranchise 100%. the black people. Yeah. From being able to vote. Yeah. That's, that's what that's about. That's what voter purges are. That's what voter ID laws are, right. man. Yes. Yeah. Like fucking voter ID laws are there specifically to screw with voters because people who don't have a lot of money and don't have a lot of time off of work don't have time to go get a fucking voter ID card, yeah, dude, man. This is another way to have a Reconstruction Era poll. Test. Exactly. That's what that's this what is. That's what it is. Yeah. It's bullshit. It's a joke. And and the thing is, is that we've proven, especially in this last election, that voter fraud is few and far between if it even happens ever, right? It happens, we looked across the whole country with a giant fucking microscope, yep. right? Huge magnifying glasses on all these different places all over the the country and they found hundreds of votes off, yeah. which is normal. Which That's is, perfectly within the the, the error, right? Yeah. The error bar. There's your, your national votes aren't hundreds of votes away from each other. And I could be wrong about this, but I don't think that I am. I think all of the convictions for vote fraud were Trump votes. Yeah. There are people voting for Trump. Yeah. All, all the ones like, we found. And it's been a handful. Yeah. Because like, it's actually a giant pain in the ass to commit voter fraud. Yeah. It's not easy to do to commit voter fraud. I want to I want to also call your attention to a couple of a uh, couple of times they they reference Ruby Freeman. Oh yeah, and I I followed that site, and that site leads you to the body cam discussions with Ruby Freeman, and what you're seeing is the people who are currently in a RICO case charge and charged inside of Georgia with intimidation of Ruby Freeman talking to her, intimidating her. That they're yeah. the you know this is a lady who is currently being, they're, they're currently prosecuting people who tried to intimidate her, right. right? 
and they're using it as evidence. In I know here. it's so. This gross. is evidence. This is what they're saying. No, look, look what happened. You're like those people tried to. They Georgia thought it was so egregious that they charged them with a crime. Yeah. Well, and. Didn't Ruby Freeman just win a giant civil lawsuit like a yeah, minute against, ago? Yeah, against, uh, against Rudy Giuliani. Right. Yeah. For, for like, like this is a victim of the right. Yeah. Like, for sure. Yeah. Like, a proven victim of the right. And how do we know it's proven? Well, because, like, some of them have, have already, like, pled to it. So, like... This is uh, yeah, and, mm. and, and it's, it's and, gross. And it's, it's beyond gross. It's gross, and you're and you're blown. I was blown away. I was like, "Hold on, you're showing me tape of their crime, I know. as and if that's that's evidence for your report." And I, I read this, and I was like, "Ruby Freeman's now going to sue you, you yeah. dumb motherfucker." Good. I want to link to this one. So I just have a giant note here that says, "This is the article they used for f for footnote forty five. Okay, so this comes from WJAC. This appears to be a ABC affiliate. DOS responds to Republican lawmakers' claim of election numbers discrepancy. A group of Republican lawmakers say they've been, performed an extensive analysis of election day data and they found troubling discrepancies. According to State Representative Frank Ryan, a Republican from Lebanon, 17 lawmakers sponsored and participated in the analysis. Ryan, who's a CPA, says they discovered discrepancies between the numbers of total votes counted and the total number of voters who voted in the 2020 general election. And so, and so if we go down here, here, I want you to read now, this is, that's what they were, that's what this, this article is about. I want you to read the Pennsylvania Department of State release, release statement. They said in today's release, Representative Ryan and others rehashed with the same lack of evidence and the same absence of supporting documentation, repeatedly debunked conspiracy theories regarding the November 3rd election. State and federal judges have sifted through hundreds of pages of unsubstantiated and false allegations and found no evidence of fraud or illegal voting. And this is his footnote. This is his footnote, right? right. At the bottom of his footnote, at the bottom of this article, at the top, if you read the top, you're like, oh, the, somebody submitted something. And then you scroll down to the bottom and like, the guy who runs it is like, this is conspiracy theory. Yeah. He literally quotes a conspiracy theory and then links it in his footnote. Yeah, and then like, that's not uncommon in this document. So in this document, there are many times where it'll read something like, multiple people said this thing happened. And you're like, okay. Yeah. And then the footnote is, multiple people said something happened. Or the footnote to Cecil's earlier point would be like a link to a court case that like got thrown the fuck out. So it's like, yeah, like the plaintiff in this case did in fact say that there was this fraud, but then the court was like, but also no, there wasn't case dismissed. Again, Trump Trump links to this, this political article, right? And it says Pennsylvania's top election official says 10,000 ballots were received after November 3rd. But then the first paragraph says Pennsylvania chief election officer announced on Tuesday that around 10,000 ballots were received between the, clo the close of polls on election day and the evening of November 6th, a number far too small to undermine the President Joe election Biden's margin of victory in the critical battleground state. So it's a number way too small, right? Yeah, so doesn't even it, matter. The thing is, is like, like in Pennsylvania, like, would this matter in Georgia? Sure, this would matter in Georgia. This would bring us down to a, a 2,000 votes instead of sure. almost 12,000, right? So it would be, it would matter. In it, it's nothing. It's literally a drop in the bucket in Pennsylvania, which was over a hundred thousand vote difference. Yeah. So it's nothing. This is a nothing that happened. You know, people see this and they and and he'll quote this and say, "Look at this crazy thing that happened." And you're like, "Yeah, that those totals were reported at the end, and it didn't change anything." And again, this is one of his footnotes. This right? is his. So let me read paragraph two of his own footnote. Paragraph two. The approximately 10,000 mail ballots are at the center of a case in front of the Supreme Court that President Donald Trump and his allies have pushed for as they advance a broader strategy that's, that's less about actually making a cohesive legal argument than it is about undermining trust in the democratic process. This is literally his quote. This, this, is, this is your his. evidence, This is man. his evidence. This is what he linked to. Dude, this would be like if I wrote a report again on how Tom is awesome and I linked places where it's like tomsucks.org. <laughs> it's like it's like all your footnotes are your dick pics or right. something. Right, <laughs> and it's just like really small JPEGs, and I'm just like, come on. Man. Oh, man. Man. They put the wrong <laughs> ones in there. The following is a list of unsatisfied women. Like, man. for real. 
Footnote 58, Tom. Let's go to footnote 58. Oh, I want to show you this one. God, is it going to be rumble.com? Dude, it's the best. This is, the, this is my favorite one. Um, he links to his own press conference as a, as <laughs> it's his own press conference. And it's his own press conference, Trump campaign news conference on Pennsylvania vote count. So he links to his own press conference as if that is an aha. Got it. <laughs> Are you serious, dude? That's your own press conference. This is genuinely unhinged. This is just like, if you put this together, I'm not even fucking around. Like if you put this together and turn this in, you would get an F minus. Yeah, I this actually think, I actually think if you turn this in, your teachers will let it throw you out a window. Like they're, <laughs> they're like, no, you have no value to society. You are not. You're no value. It, if I pass or fail you, it's actually on me. It's, yeah, right. I, yeah. I need to remove you is yeah. what I need to do. You're expelled. You're expelled. You re- I'm you literally would- going to expel you. I'll, I'm going to defenestrate you <laughs> right now. I, I want to say though, so 58, Tom. Yeah. Read what 58 says. It's here in Philadelphia. Okay, so his, he says, in Philadelphia, hundreds of thousands of mail-in ballots were unlawfully counted in secret in defiance of a court order while Republican poll watchers were thrown out of buildings where voting took place. And his evidence for that it's is his, a press conference he gives it's his own where he said it. it. Where he says it out loud. That's the link inside yeah. of there. Yeah. This is like, you genuinely, you can't get more up your own ass than that. Uh, you did, said it was an Ouroboros before. It's even worse now. Did you go to tautology.com for some of his evidence as well? <laughs> <laughs> I want to read. So a couple of these, I want to just talk about the bias fact check that I found. So I'm going to call up so this is one of those one of those places was this Ohio Star was uh, listed multiple times. The Ohio Star is a questionable source. And I want you to read, Tom, the detailed report. Just read what it says down here. All right. Questionable reasoning, imposter site, lack of transparency, <laughs> propaganda, bias rating, right, factual reporting, mixed, uh, MBFC, credibility rating, Low credibility. Low credibility. So literally, he linked to a propaganda site. Yeah, as if it was a thing, right? He's it's an imposter and this, site. And this isn't like this isn't like one. This is multiples. Yeah, and this isn't the only one I found. I'm not going to call them all up. Yeah, but this isn't the only one I found that literally listed it as a propaganda site. It said it's a, in this media fact check thing. It's like it's a propaganda site. It's not a real site. That Gateway Pundit is a propaganda That's site. A propaganda site. That actually has lower ratings than this. <laughs> it's it's embarrassing. Gateway Pundit. There are times in this where he just straight up links to a YouTube page. Yeah. Or Rumble page. Or Rumble. Rumble is, here's the thing about Rumble. Rumble can't even be on YouTube. Like, like YouTube's algorithm threw Rumble out. And it's it's so embarrassingly bad that YouTube is like, nah, man, we won't even have that no, on here. Not here. We'll have fucking Andrew Tate on yeah, here. Yeah, we'll have but Andrew not Tate Rumble. and some like fucking anti-vaxxer bullshit, but right. we won't have this. Right. God we'll damn. Joe Rogan. <laughs> but not this. Not fucking this nonsense. We just got to dig through this website a little. Sure, sure, sure. So he the, he also quotes this guy. Oh, yes, yes, And this yes. is Vashav, Vashiva creating the future. And so this is a guy who goes through a big, long thing about how there's voter fraud, right? So he's talking about it. It's like a whole 15-minute presentation that he linked to right here. But I want you to read, Tom. Can you just read a few of these bullets at the top yeah, here? there's a bunch of things I want to read yeah, on so this. Okay? Why don't we so, just read the top bullets yeah, here real right. quick? So this is for Vashiva creating the future. Scientist, inventor, fighter, <laughs> solutions, <laughs> events, shop, contact, about. You've got to click on fighter for me. Okay, fighter. Because he doesn't look cage ready. Yeah, and then it links, it goes to a page where he's just got this like crazy, how we create food for all locally, a systems solution. This is not anybody who you could take seriously. How you allow yourself to be to say this is nonsense. This is, this a, is but, all. This is this is a this yeah. is a guru guy who's literally just trying to cash in on Trump. Yeah. This is a guy who knows. You know, you look at this site. You know he's a grifter. You know he's trying to grift. You know, look, he's selling fucking hyaluronic acid for pet joint health. Yes, I mean, and go go back to the front page real quick too, because like. I want to just I want to just laugh about something I saw as well. So the the little like bottom third or whatever on the what is it called? It says truthfreedomhealth.com. Get educated or be enslaved. 
Look, man, yeah, anytime lower third is your pretty, lower third is like terrifying. be enslaved, the future will set you free. The truth is now truthhealthfreedom.org.com. This is a guy. Like, all this, this stuff is just like, this is like QVC this is for like conspiracy things. Ambulance chasing chiropractor. Yeah, man. That's what it feels yeah. like to me. It doesn't feel nothing. like anything at all. And this is a site. This is a link. This, guy, is, this is, a is evidence. On his shit. This is his stuff. This is what he linked to. This because is, this is how dumb he thinks his constituency is, though. Like, truly, what does this say about the constituency? It says, like, you guys are fucking stupid. Man. These are the sites you're already at. You're I found already so buying many fucking debunking. boner pills for your dog or whatever. I found so many de sites that debunked all of these points. And any of the points that they didn't debunk are ones I couldn't find in a normal site. So there's some that I couldn't find debunking, but it's because nobody's heard of it before. Now, I'm right, sure in a couple of weeks... You know, we talked about this recently about, you know, people, if you tell them to go get their own information, they might believe this stuff because yeah. there's nothing out there debunking it. This is a great example of that because somebody's going to read this and they're going to, they're going to do a search like I did. Maybe the, they, even with a good faith, they may do yeah. a search and they'll come up with one of these gateway pundit sites, or one of these other fake sites that's made to fool you where this Vishnu guy who's going to tell him some weird stuff about hyaluronic oils and stuff. Right. And then also that Donald Trump should have been elected. And then they're also going to find you know, there, there's just going to be a cascade of misinformation that you can't get in front of. That that the debunkers, the people who are going to have to read this and, and carefully debunk it, they can't get in front of it fast yeah. enough. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a bunch of people who are going to be fooled by this. And this is dangerous for the country for him to do this. And I hope they use it as a blueprint to fucking prosecute it. Dude, I do too. Like, I, what... What I find really distressing is that what is being implied here with the use of these footnotes is the public and the constituency are so are so media and news and digitally illiterate that they will go to these sites and not see them for the red flags you and I immediately see them for. Yeah. These are the types of sites that like, as soon as you see it, as soon as you open it up, you're like, oh, it's a bullshit site. Yeah, it's garbage. Like, it just hits it's every alarm garbage, bell, yeah. right? It's trash. You can see it visually in seconds, yeah. but like, we're at a place where not everyone can. Yeah. 70 million people or so can't see through this shit. And they're going to go they're going to go to one of these sites and they're going to say, "Well, I don't know what what to think, but when I went to his report, I typed it in and there was a news report about it." Yeah, I saw it at Gateway Pundit. I saw Pundit. it. I saw, I saw it, it at the Georgia Star News. I saw it at this weird other site or I you know, I went there and he's right. This Ruby Freeman was talking on camera. Yeah, it's taken completely out of context while she's being intimidated. But, right. you know, they'll see it and, you know, your eyes don't deceive you, right? You see it and you think, oh, no, I saw it with my own saw eyes. Saw it with my own eyes, yeah. And, and, and this is super dangerous. I hope what this is, is a bow that they use to wrap him up and tie him away forever. Put That's what I hope it is. It, because it genuinely feels like he basically signed his own confession note with this. Yeah, this is fucking crazy. And as I was reading through this, I read through this just this morning. And as I was reading it for, for our patrons, I was like, it, it, it becomes so exhausting to go through. And I was really like aware of just how much that exhaustion sure. is the strategy. Yeah, absolutely. It is absolutely the strategy. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this week. Thank you for joining us on our Thursday show. We're going to be back on Monday with a brand new show. And we're going to catch you then, but we're going to leave you like we always do with the Skeptic's Creed. Credulity is not a virtue. It's fortune cookie cutter, mommy issue, hypno Babylon bullshit. Couched in scientician, double bubble, toil and trouble, pseudo quasi alternative, acupunctuating, pressurized, stereogram, pyramidal, free energy, healing, water, downward spiral, brain dead pan, sales pitch, late night info docutainment. Leo Pisces, cancer cures, detox, reflex, foot massage, death in towers, tarot cars, psychic healing, crystal balls, Bigfoot, Yeti, aliens, churches, mosques, and synagogues, temples, dragons, giant worms, Atlantis, dolphins, truthers, birthers, witches, wizards, vaccine nuts, shaman healers, evangelists, conspiracy, doublespeak, stigmata, nonsense. Expose your signs. Thrust your hands, bloody, evidential, conclusive. Doubt even this.
The opinions and information provided on this podcast are intended for entertainment purposes only. All opinions are solely that of Glory Hole Studios, LLC. Cognitive dissonance makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, currentness, suitability, or validity of any information and will not be liable for any errors, damages, or butthurt arising from consumption. All information is provided on an as-is basis. No refunds. Produced in association with the local Dairy Council and viewers like you.